Hey, this is Joanna Chavica, the Wichita Eagle and VarsityKansas.com. And Tony Adami. I've called you my coworker, my cohort. I don't know, we got to come up with something cool. I like both of those. He's part of my posse. Thank you. Anyway, all right. Looking at area boys first tonight. Uh, I tell you, I was at just an incredible game. Trinity versus Cheney. It was for the Central Plains League lead. And <laughs> Trinity is up by eight points. And it comes down to the final seconds, and Alex Carroll is able to, uh, in the final six seconds, drive the length of the court to score. Just an incredible basket right after Cheney had tied it on free throws. They got these crazy three-pointers from Cameron Hill and Ty Patterson. It was really an exciting game, and it was a, a packed house there. So that's a good win for Trinity. Derby goes to Salina Central, and they do lose. Salina Central gets the 73-67 to win there. Uh, James Conley with 24 points. That's disappointing, I know, for Derby, which really wanted to be able to take that league title and that league lead. That is a tough loss. I mean, they've been playing so well since the Dodge City Tournament. It's their first real setback in, yep. like, a month. So I agree. And Collegiate had no problem, 96-50 over Mulvane. Four players and double figures. You always got to like that as a coach, right? Yeah. yeah, so that's about it for the era. What do you have from the City League? I was at East High tonight for a pretty... It was, you know, they had about a 40-minute halftime. They did their Hall of Fame introductions, inductions with a couple of Chuck Porter, the old football coach, and it's a pretty crazy environment, but they still won 89-55 over South, and uh, the thing that I'm starting to notice about East is a lot of teams can play them close for two or three quarters, and they just absolutely blow them out of the water, because Samaje Jones will go off on you at any point, uh, had 30 tonight, uh, shooting threes, uh, you know, takes the ball to the rack, and then Zach Jackson is, is steady, uh, 27 points tonight, and of course there's Xavier Kelly, who dominates who defensively you know might be uh the best defensive player one of the best defensive players in the state just because the way he blocks shots and, and kind of changes the game uh the rest of the city league uh carroll won they beat southeast uh capen beat northwest north beat west uh what it's shaping up to is you know there's this battle for second place still uh behind east it doesn't you know east still has games against heights and capen two tough games left but uh those are teams that they've handled so i mean it'd take a a, a really big night from one of those teams to, you know, knock them off at this point because they're 12-0 and 0, uh, in City and 16-0 and 0 overall. On the girls' side, nothing but blowouts. Uh, East uh, lost to South big. South is still uh, undefeated in City League play. Cape and blew out Northwest. North beat uh, West. And Carroll beat Southeast, too. So it was just, you know, blowouts on the girls' side, not a lot. No surprises at all. And you have area girls. Well, I had a really good game also for the Trinity and Cheney girls mm -hmm. game. That turned into an incredible one. I didn't think it would be quite that close because it was a 500 Cheney versus then 12-4 and four Trinity. But it comes down again to the final seconds. Taylor Denny from Cheney, I thought she was going to be the story of the night. She gets her fifth steal, goes, gets a nice little pass to Tori Lonker. They go up by, by one with 12 seconds to go. But Trinity comes right back. Caroline Zilker, as the clock uh, goes off about a second later, she hits a three-pointer off an inbounds play. It was really pretty to impressive to win it. Two games, two Done. games that came in the last second. Right. Isn't that just crazy? Wow. I know. I I feel very fortunate to see one or two of those a year, but to see two in one night, it's pretty nuts. And that crowd, I mean, it. I think Cheney was just shocked. I mean, after the boys lost in similar fashion, it was, it was pretty quiet in there. Uh, McPherson's Taylor Robertson goes off for 40 one points. I'm telling you, this kid, the first time I saw her, I had heard about her. I knew she had just this incredible shot, and it is so pretty. I mean, it's just fundamentally, technically beautiful. I love a good shot. Anyway, uh, Andale girls, though, they, they go into Wellington, and they get that win. Brittany Meyer with 25 points. Andale, I'm kind of curious about how this team is going to do in the postseason because they can look great, and then other times they kind of struggle in games you don't expect them to. Who do you think has the prettiest shot of all time? Oh, God, all time. I don't know. I can come up with the ugliest shots of all time, but I won't say that. I don't know. That's a really good question. Ray Allen. Oh, I didn't know we were going NBA. I thought you were talking like high school basketball, <laughs> and I was no. like racking my brain. All right. He does have a pretty shot. Derby Girls beat Salina Central. I did not expect that. That's only Salina Central's second loss in league, and Derby comes out 47-45, Grace Mitchell, who, you know, she's... Because of their record, we really don't talk about her much, but she is truly one of the best players in the Wichita area. She had 18 points. When I saw them play against uh, Mays, Wyoming was in attendance, Oklahoma State was in attendance, and they did want to see her play. And uh, that's all I got for the night. So Good. We're going to be back soon. All right. Thanks for watching.